So, you know, I told you that Lelia, Henry and Charles's mother, was did a lot of artist work. And so I brought these adorable little soft dishes, which she did. They have her initials on the back, and she did them in 1903. A set, I have a set of three, and these lovely little delicate roses. So that's one thing she did. And then, back in the 1880s, she did a set of 12 dessert plates, which uh, from 1888 to 1892, she worked on these. And I have all 12 of them. So here we have these. She hand painted. And it's Haviland China so from beautiful. France. Beautiful. And she just loved doing this. Of course, it was a thing that ladies often did. It was not uncommon. This is so much about her influence on the boys. Yes, mm -hmm. it really does. On the other hand, she was fully aware of how dangerous it was to, to be seduced by art <laughs> and music and architecture. Not architecture so much, but art and music. And she wrote to the boys once when they were at MIT and she said they were wanting music lessons and you know and they wanted the piano there and, and Charles was trying to write plays and all of it. and she said mostly pointed at Charles yes. I'm sure yes she <laughs> said well it's all well and good to love art and music and all these things but it doesn't put bread on the table so <laughs> you get back to work and uh, get your certificate yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, now this You and I are going to play this <laughs> game. You've never played this with me, no, have I you? No, I haven't. Okay, but you got to promise not to shake the table. This is a game that Henry invented. He loved games. He loved cross, uh, not crossword puzzles so much, but jigsaw. He had wonderful, we had wooden jigsaw puzzles that we used to do all the time. And of course, we didn't have television. We did have a radio, but you know, we made our own entertainment in those days. So. Uh, this was a game that he invented, and so you took one of these old-fashioned Coke bottles, put it in the middle of a, on the floor, and then we would all sit in a circle, and then you would deal out X number of kitchen matches. So here's some for you, Ted. I should give us an even number. Okay. That's about even. And then you would start building on the top of this bottle. Oh. Now, in our family, most of us, the women, were rather timid. And we would just carefully put this on. Now, if, if you put one on, and then I, uh, now see, he's more like my father and my grandpa. Oh. Then you have to take that back. <laughs> and the, the object of the game is to get out of your matches first. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, you <laughs> so forgot to tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so you put another one on, and we'll try it again. Okay, let's see, I'll, I'll do So, you know, you lay the groundwork here, you, you build the ground floor, right? And then, and then, my grandfather and my father would start competing with each other to see who could do the most rakish things. And pretty soon, they'd be sticking the ah! things in like that. <laughs> But they would start building sleeping porches out. And so, so whenever I, and they would call them that. So, so whenever I come here to talk to the docents, and we're up there in the billiards room, and I'm looking out at all these beams going out, and I think of this game, you know, with all the... It's the stick, it's the original stick style. Yeah, it's the original, the it's the stick style. absolute stick style. So the question is, which came first, the I'm gamble house or the more. game? Yeah. Did they play this as boys, do you wonder? I mean, uh, you have to ask yourself. Okay. Anyway, you could go on and on. And of course, if you have a big circle of people, you've got a lot of matches to put on. <laughs> but uh, it was pretty fun. We used to get a big kick out of that. That was definitely his game. So that tells you a little bit about what he liked.
But the reason I like the picture is because this is the way I remember my grandfather. He was jolly and he was, he had a twinkle in his eye and he was. You're saying all the Greens had this kind of yeah. love of life and joy and right. it was hard to put into words. Well, and Charles's family, they were really devilish. <laughs> they they <laughs> did all these tricks. Their kids were crazy. They lived up here on Arroyo Terrace and that was dirt at one time and the carriages, so horses and buggies would come through there, right? And they would string a string across or a wire across the road, at just about at the chest height of the horses. And so, of course, when the horse hit it, the horse would jump or do something wild, and then the kids would hose down everybody in the carriage. <laughs> I mean, they were... They, maybe that's one reason they moved to Carmel. They had to get out of the city. I don't know. <laughs> the police were after them. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> it was back in the, about 1990. We were still living in Pacific Palisades. And we went to Mort's Delicatessen, which was this big gathering place for all the movie stars and everybody else. So we were in cafeteria line, and I, this man, young man was standing in, next to me in line, and he had his back to me, and here I am, I look at his back and I'm staring at my grandfather on this t-shirt, his face, this big face. I was shocked and then I, so I tapped him on the shoulder <laughs> I said, do you know you have my grandfather on your back? <laughs> and he looked at me and, really? You mean you're related to the Green Brothers? And then when he turned around, there was Charles on the front. <laughs> I never saw that t-shirt again, but isn't that a funny story? Yes.